Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day 10 of uh, Data Analytics with Career Guidance class. In day 10, today, let's see what all uh, we'll be learning. We'll be learning about grouping and outline. We'll be learning about consolidate. We'll learn about flash fill and then data validation. So let's go to our Excel file. So here I have some data for your people where we can work on the data. All right. So first we'll see what is consolidate. Okay. So here I have four sheets, West, South, East, Central, and consolidate. Let me just delete this. We'll create a new one. I'll name it as consolidate. Consolidate means summarizing the data from various different ranges. The range can be anywhere. So it can be either in the same sheet or it can be in any other sheets as well. Now, if you see, I have West, South, East, and Central, four different regions. I have this range, but in different, different sheets. So you can have in the same range as well. I mean, same sheet as well. If you go to this data and here I have this consolidate, if you click on this consolidate, you can see that it says summarize data from separate ranges, consolidating the results in a single output range. Let me click on this consolidate. Here you can see we have this one small window where we can actually consolidate the data. The options what we have here is if you just click on this, you can see there are some functions what we can actually perform, some count, average, so anything you can actually use. I'll just take this sum. Okay, so here we can actually take the references. So what we'll do, we'll go to our consolidate sheet and then we'll try to consolidate all these four different regions. Select anywhere. I'll click on this consolidate. Now here, we saw this sum, I'll select this sum. A reference, I'll click on this, the small icon is there. We call it as a range picker. I'll just click here and here, I will select the range. Like this. I selected the range and then I'll say add. South, let me go select the range, say add. So let's do the same thing for all the regions where we need to consolidate, take this central, select, and then say add. You can see that I have added all the four ranges. Once we added all the four ranges, here we have the heading on top and heading in the left hand side. Let me select this top row and left column. We just observe it says left column and top row only. Okay. So why I'm actually stressing on this top row and left column is, let me tell you, when I say OK, you can see that I'm not getting any values for this, but I'm getting the heading here and I'm getting sales and profit consolidated, that is summarized report. This is for sum. Let me keep this as sum. Let's go back to the data and study. Whenever I'm consolidating, it is just a simple way of summarizing the data. It is something like pivot tables, but not exactly pivot tables this is also used for summarizing the data but if you see it is summarizing only the first column that is left column and these two which are actually numbers and the top row so if you are actually doing some simple summarization then what you can do is you can use these type of you know consolidation that is summarizing the data these two will not be consider. All right, let's go to this consolidate. Now I want average. Let me go here, click, you know, somewhere here, consolidate, and I'll select average and say, okay, see, this is average. I'm getting average. So I don't have to go and select every range again. So I'll type, oh, this is for average. Now suppose if you want maximum, let's select this, consolidate, 
here we'll say max and then i'll say okay see this is for max so in each region i'm getting this let's say minimum and select here consolidate click on this minimum and say okay see i'm getting this minimum same minimum. Right. So now, if you see, I'm getting some average, minimum, and maximum. Let's go here. I'll say consolidate, and I will select to count. You just observe when I say this count, and if I say OK, the category and ship mode. See, even for that, I'm getting the results. So whenever you're actually using this consolidate, keep in mind. So whatever data I have in the left column, that will be grouped. So what is the meaning of group? Grouping means it will give me something like say all the values will be combined and I'll get one value that is grouping. Aggregating means you're doing some operations that is functions. Some average, maximum, minimum, this count. So all these are actually called as aggregate functions. Aggregating means they are actually getting totaled or depending on the function what I'm actually using. Usually, we actually don't use, you know, all these columns that is text columns. Only one text column will be there. You can have any number of values that is number columns. So these two columns I just kept to make you guys understand that if you have text column, so what happens? So for that reason, I just kept this. Right. So we understood about the consolidation here. Now, what happens? If let me just clear all this, what happens if the columns are not with the same names? Now, if you go and check all the four different ranges, they have got same names. What if I don't have the same names? Let's go here. Here, what I'll do is I'll say sale and profit. Here, I'll say sale and profit. Here, what I'll do, I'll keep it as sales and here I'll mention it as profits. Let me make it as profits. And let's go here, sales, profits. You can see that these two sheet, these two range have got the same name and these two ranges have got the same name. Let's go here now. We just observe. Let's do for sum. Sum and if we say, okay, see. Now I have got two extra columns. That is, these columns are not matching. So whichever columns are matching, they are actually getting consolidated. Otherwise, they'll create a new column like this. So you should be very careful about the headings here. When you are consolidating, it will consider based on the headings and then it will group. All right. So let's correct this. I'll make it as sales. So I'm just correcting the headings. All right, so I corrected these headings. Now, let's see. Let me just clear this. I will take this consolidate and I'll say, okay, we have this, right? Now, what if there is change in this particular numbers? Okay, I'll just make it as one just to see if this will get changed. Now, when I change the numbers here, the values also should get changed here. If you go and check, nothing has been changed. Okay. Nothing has been changed here. That means the data what we have here, once we consolidate, once we get the data here, there is no link between this table and this table. Now, suppose if you want to get the data, then we'll go here and we'll go here, say consolidate. Again, we have to go and say, okay, you can see that now it is getting changed. So if you're actually consolidating here, and if you want to get the values to be refreshed, again, clear this, and then once again, click on this consolidate and then say, okay. All right, so we got these values. Let me just bring back those data i'll say all right 
Now, this is one way of refreshing the data. There is no refresh, so we have to delete the previous uh, consolidated data and then again we have to keep. Otherwise, there is another way. Let's go here. I just clear the data here. I will select the first cell. You can select anywhere here, but uh, let me select this first cell. I'll go to this consolidate. Here, I have create links to source data. Click on this. When I select this create links to source data, what happens? All the regions, uh, sorry, all the ranges what you have selected, they will be linked now. The previous one, we had not linked. Now we are actually linking. So I'll click on this. Okay, we'll just see what happens. You can see that the entire data is getting linked here. The once it is getting linked, now you see we'll get some, uh, you know, grouped, uh, say, cells here or say rows here. Let me click on this. See, it'll get expanded. When I click on this first level, you can see we have the central, east, south, and west, and I'm getting the consolidated report here that is summarized report. Now, if you just select this, you can see that it says sum. The same way when I expand this, see, everywhere it is actually referred. That is, it is with the formulas. So that means they are linked. Now, if I just go here, select this, you just observe. Now, I'll do the same thing. I just go here, save one. I just change the values. That is, invest. Now, if you go to this consolidate, see, automatically this will change because every values are actually linked you can see that so whatever values are changed here that will get changed here also so if you think you want to refer or say a link so what you have to do we have to check this link in consolidate or if you don't want to have a link just get the value summarized values then you can use this without this link so this consolidate option is actually used whenever you feel that a quick summarized report has to be drawn. okay so this is consolidation so here we have this data tool there are so many data tools here we'll discuss one by one in this consolidate is one option or say one functionality or one feature which will help us in summarizing the data quickly right so this is about consolidation the next one what we have is subtotal grouping ungrouping and subtotal let's see what it is i have a sheet here in the previous example we had the data in different different sheets so that is west south east center the same data i've just put it in one single sheet that is one below the other now what i want is I want this region to be grouped. When I say group, all the common values will be grouped, that is summarized, and it will be like one. Say, for example, I have so many centrals here. All the common values will come, and that will become one center. Now, what I'll do, my requirement is I need, after every region, I need one row to be inserted, and I should get the total, that is only for the central. Let me go here and see. So here we have the central. See, I want one row to be inserted and I should get the total for the entire central. Same thing for east, then west um, and south and east, whatever the regions are there. For all regions, I should get one subtotal. So here I have something called a subtotal. Let me click on this subtotal. You can see that I'll get one small window exactly like what we did this consolidation. Here first it lasts for region. So here I have so many uh, columns, all the columns, whatever is there in this range. I'll select this region as of now. And then I'll go here, select sum. I want one extra row to be inserted and I need sum for that. Here it will select one aggregated column. But I also have one more column that is sales. I can select any number of columns which have got number columns. I selected sales and profit if you want count you can go you can select the text column as well when you have this count here okay but as of now i'm saying this sum other columns i cannot sum only the number column only i can sum now i'll say okay you just see 
I'll say okay. People, are you able to hear my voice? I think some of them are not able to hear the voice. Are you able to hear my voice properly? Please say yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Ahmed Fazi, please check your uh, internet speed. Okay. Right. So, when I clicked on this group, okay, the subtotal, you can see that the entire data got grouped. Now, I have these three levels. What are those? When I say one, you can see that I have this grand total. Next, suppose if I click on this second level, you can see that, see, all the regions have got the subtotal here. That is, it is getting one extra row inserted and it is giving me the total for each different regions. Now, let's see. I'll expand this. I'll say click on this three. You can see that I'm getting this data. Let's go to that row. See, you can see that there is one row which got inserted. Right. Let me just click on this one and two and three. There are three different levels and one row got inserted here. That is the subtotal. You just observe now when you click on this, you can see that I have the subtotal. Here I have this subtotal. So wherever I need the subtotal automatically, it will give me this. <clears throat> Right. Now, I want to remove this. I'll go here. Go to the subtotal. And here, I have this remove one. You can see that the subtotal is gone. Right. Next, let's see if you want to group the values based on category. Okay, now let me go here. I'll click on this subtotal. This time I will select category. You can see that I have this category here, the category column. So, based on that, I'm actually trying to group it. I'll go here, I'll say okay. When I click on okay, you just see it is taking a lot of time. When we did the same thing for region, it took few seconds, and now it is taking a lot of time. So why I gave this example is you should understand how the grouping has to be done. You can see that here it's saying inserting subtotals. There are so many subtotals it is getting inserted. But when I have read the data here in this category, I have only three categories. That is office supplies, technology and furniture. Let's see what's happening. So these are all some uh, mistakes actually what we do. So these things we should actually know so that, uh, you know, you're not doing any mistakes which will uh, uh, you know create problems let's see right now you just observe same thing i did i just took the subtotal and then selected a column to group and then aggregate sales and profit. Now this first level, you can see that I have this grand total. In second level, when I click, you can see that to expand itself, it is taking a lot of time. You see here it says office supplies, technology, furniture, office supplies, furniture, technology. It is continuously, you know, giving the same grouping here, which is not right. There is some problem here. I'll tell you what. Let me go to the subtotal. I'll just try to remove all. See, for removing also, it is taking a lot of time. So, let's see. It's taking a lot of time, actually, because of one small mistake, what we have done. This purposely added so that to make you guys understand that, you know, if you do one small mistake, this is what will happen. It is removing subtotal for all the groups, whatever we have created, right? So what was that mistake? See, grouping will happen like this. 
it will select the first cell. It will keep selecting all the common values and here it will group. Now, once it is coming to the next row, you can see that it's technology which is not matching. So, this will be another group. Now, it is going to another cell here. This is not matching. Again, it is one more group. Then if you go here, see again office supplies, which is separate group. Then these two will be one group. Then again, these three. Then it goes. So, it goes on like this such. Which is not a right way of grouping. So, what should we do? Select the data. Go to this data. You have this sort. Whichever column you think you are trying to group, please select this and click on this category and say okay. Now, if you see, it is actually sorted. The category, all the three categories are getting sorted. Now, you just observe. I'll click on the subtotal. I have the same column category, sales and profit, which is applying the function. I will say, okay, see, within few seconds now, it got grouped. Why? Because every categories have been arranged, sorted. See, I have only three groups. So, you should be very careful about these things. Let me click on the subtotal. I'll say, remove. All right, so we understood about how to create subtotal for one car. Let me show you one more interesting thing about this. Let me sort the data now by region only. Say okay. All right. Now, for example, we have the common values we grouped. But imagine I have some columns like this. I'm just creating some columns here. Okay. Let's say this is profit for 2000. Let's say 2020. And this one for 2021. This is 2022. Here I'll say total. Okay. Just I'm giving an example. Let's take some. Say so there is some total like this. This. I'm creating this column just to make you understand what all we can do with this grouping and outline. Now, what I'll do, I will select these two columns, go to this group, okay, and say group by columns. See now, these two will become one group. Now, let me click on this. See, if you think getting confused we can have something like this total 2020 okay so here i'll say total 2021 here we'll say total 2022 okay so the same thing let's go here select this group and say columns say okay now this is one group these two i'll select group columns and say okay. see now i can see this template when I click on this, if you want to know the, um, you know, how this total has come, just click on this, you'll get something. So click here. So likewise, we can expand the data. So this way also, we can actually use this grouping and outline. So what you see, this one is the outline, say like this. So this two things, that is consolidation, and the grouping and outline, they are very interesting because you have a lot of things to work on. A lot of things actually to make your, uh, um, um, you know, data analyzing very easy. Because here I have the subtotal for each region and also I can have some grouping while columns. Same thing can be done for your rows also. Just select, let's say for example, I want to group only this one. Even though it is actually central, I want to group only this one. Uh, the selected cells, I'll go here, say group rows. You can see that only these many rows are actually grouped. So you can do it manually or you can actually group you know, by using the subtotal as well. Right? So this way we can summarize the data and also we can, uh, you know, um, get the um, summarized uh, totals or any functions, whatever you want to do, like any values if you want to group. So those things we can do with so subtotal. Yes. Now we got some columns here. That's why it is just taking this. See? 
just say remove all so all the grouping and uh, say grouping and whatever you have done the subtotal everything will get right so this is about subtotal let's go to this data validation this data validation is actually a very important chapter okay so whatever we are doing today is all about very simple ones the features what we have that is we just select and then we can actually try to you know apply in our template consolidation so sorry data validation so what is validation okay let's understand validation means we're trying to validate the data what we enter for example just see i have this name age order date and you know so many other uh, columns when i'm entering i should be able to enter only the valid names or say the data for example i have this age what if someone enters like this it is invalid let's say i'll enter number assume that age should be number what if someone enters some number like this age should be it should have some limitations we should validate the data while entering if you want to apply validation so what i'll do i'll go here select the cells where i need to validate click on this data validation when i click on this data validation you can see that i'll get one small window with three different tabs tab one says settings tab two input message and error alert settings any value can go here and if you see i have so many options now i want to validate this data where i need to have the number click on this whole number when i say whole number here we are able to enter only whole number there is no decimal number which we can enter the validation is i want to enter the values between 25 to 60 so here i have so many options greater than equals to greater than or equals to say between not between i will select between because i want the value to be entered from 25 to 60 and say okay all right let me enter now see it won't allow me to enter the values enter any value which is not between 25 to 60 it will not allow let me say 34 56 39 it will allow because the values are between 25 to 60. All right let me select this we'll go to this data validation here you can see it says minimum 25 maximum 60. when i'm entering the value you see i'm getting one message the message says this value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell we know that the data is wrong but we don't know what is the right data to be entered then what i'll do i'll try to change the message go to this error alert here you have this three different type of error alerts stop warning information when i say stop it will not allow we'll work on all these different uh, styles so what we'll do we'll give a customized message we'll say h here we'll say enter age between 25 to 60 and say done. now you see enter age between 25 to 60 it will not allow and it is giving me the message exact message what we have to enter what if i would have selected this warning and say okay see now if the error alert is warning i'll say 12 you see it will give me a warning message but it will still allow me to enter the value see though it is invalid if it is a warning message it will allow me to enter the data what if this data validation was information this is like you're just giving an information that's all that is it is invalid data say enter age between 25 to 60 say okay see it is allowing me to enter the data so if you think i want to avoid user entering the invalid data 
please go and select stop so that the user will not be able to enter invalid data. But otherwise, if you think that I want to give some warning message or if there is any information, you can use these as well. Right. So we understood that we are giving some message here. When I enter invalid data, it is not allowing me to enter the data. But the message is coming once the user is entering the data. What if I'm getting the information before entering itself so that the user will not enter invalid data? Let me select this. I'll click on this data validation. Here I'll say input message. So in this input message, I'll copy this and I'll put it here. Here I'll give one title. Say OK. Now you just observe. See, wherever I click, I'll get the message before only. That means it is giving me the message before we enter the data. So this actually helps us in entering the right data. The user will be entering right data because it's getting the information before entering itself. So this is how actually we should use this data validation. This is one of the validations what I've thought. Let's see for this order date. Let's say my requirement is the user, the user should enter either today's date or greater than today's date. Let me select this. I'll click on this data validation here. We'll go to this settings. This time I'll say date because the validation is date. Greater than or equals to. I will use equals today. Because this template will be used every day. When I say today, if I open this today, so it will be 7 June. Then tomorrow if you open it, it will become 8 June. Say OK. See, now you go and check this. I will enter 1st Jan 2023. It will not allow. Same thing. You can give the message here also. Warning message. Any other stop message or anything you can give for this as well. You can try out for this. I'm just telling you how the validation has to be given. Customizing of the messages. You please try. Mobile number. Let's say the mobile number should be of 10 digits. Click on this data validation. And here. I'll say text length. Here we'll say equal to 10. That means it has to be 10 numbers. Now let me go here. See, this will allow. But if you type only four numbers, it will not allow. But the exact phone number, you cannot validate that because it will actually count the text length, the number of text length. All right. Now I have the subcategory. Imagine that here we cannot validate because here we have to enter the text. Let's say I have one subcategory as art. Some people will say art. Some people will say arts. You know, some people might enter something like this. All these actually fall under one category actually. But when I consolidate, when I, when I actually summarize the data, what happens? This will be a different value. This will be different value and this will be different value which is not correct. What should I do? Instead of allowing the user to enter the data, what I can do is I will select this, go to data validation. Here I have something called as list. I'll say source and then here I'll select this source like this. And I'll click on OK. Now you just see. Now, if you go here and try to type arts, it will not allow because the value is not there in this particular list. So likewise, I can actually validate the template. Okay, so data validation is a very uh, important, uh, you know, feature in Excel when actually you are creating a template and you're trying to validate uh, the user not to enter invalid data. Whenever I create any new sheet, let's say I'll create one new sheet, you can see that you go to this data validation, it will be any value. You go and select any cell, it says any value. That means we can enter any value in this particular, in this particular sheet. But you have to go and apply the validation. Right. 
Now, suppose you think that I have a template here and now there are so many data which has been already entered. Now you are trying to apply validation on that. And now you can see that before applying the validation, there are some data which is entered. Go to this circle invalid data. Click on this. See, there are some invalid data which is already entered. I need to correct this. Go here. Let me see that. See. Suppose if you think that this, let it be, it is already entered and this is valid, you know, before giving the validation, they've already entered. Let's keep it. Go here and say clear validation circles. So likewise, we can actually validate the templates. All right. There are still so many validations here. Try out with all the other validations as well. Right. The next one what we have is flash fill. Flash fill is an AI uh, enabled uh, feature in uh, Excel, which is available from 2010 and above versions. It's not there in 2007. This flash fill actually gives automatic results. For example, I want the first name, say, clear. Just type the first name. Control E is a shortcut key. Or go to this data and here have this flash fill. Click on this. See. Last name. Just type. Say enter. See. I want only initials. C G. See. I want the name to be in small letters. See. Anything actually we can extract the data here. All right. Let's say I want to type something like say Claire is from South region. You just say I gave an example. That's all. If you say enter, you can see that automatically I'm getting the result here. This is completely AI enabled. You can see here I have this Kentucky, the city. I will type like this from South region and from okay, spelling should be same. No spellings should be like uh, mistakes or say changes in the spellings. Cases can be anything, but spelling should be right. See now, see, it is trying to extract this data automatically. It is trying to understand what actually we are trying to do. Suppose I want to extract the website address. I'll go here, see. India.org. See, because all the websites has got the same, uh, you know, domain. So it's giving me the same uh, domain address, the website address here. Otherwise, it would have extracted whatever values are there. I want to extract only city. Okay. Okay. See, this is flash fill. So flash fill is a very interesting, uh, you know, feature which will work automatically right so this is about the data tools there is one more data tool text to columns a lot of things to learn in this text to columns along with this we have uh, you know uh, so many other new features which is available in excel that is get data we'll see how we can import the data how we can actually take the data from uh, uh, text files, CSV files, and then consolidate that in our uh, sheet. That will work in the next sessions. But today, we have learned. Let's summarize quickly what all we have learned today. So we learned about grouping and outline. That is subtotal. Then we learned about consolidation, then flash fill, and then data validation. All these are actually come. These things will actually come under data tools. And there is one more remove duplicates. If you think you know you want to remove duplicate. Let me copy this. This is nothing very complex one. Just paste it. If you think I want to get unique values and remove duplicate, just click on this and say, OK, see, all the names which are duplicated will be removed. That's all. Remove duplicates. So whenever you think that I want to get only unique values, let's take this region, copy this, paste it somewhere. 
and then say remove duplicates. Say okay. Right. So likewise, we can remove the duplicates. So we have learned remove duplicates as well. It's a very simple topic, so I just didn't want to stress more on that. Okay. All right. So this is all about today's session that is grouping and outline, consolidate, flash fill, data validation, and remove duplicates. Right. Okay. So we'll stop here and the questions. There was one question actually. Let me just finish that and then I'll take more other questions. So what was the question? If you want to consolidate using category instead of region. Okay. Rakesh is asking this question. Rakesh, are you there? If we want to consolidate using category. See, if you want to do that, then there is that category. Yeah. So this should be in the first column or you should select only this range. Okay. You can select only this range. While actually you are selecting the range and then you can consolidate. So make sure that the consolidation when you are doing, uh, you know, uh, we can uh, have this as my first, that is left row, then we can do that. All right. Gopi is asking one question. Instead of instead of using custom list, are we use a flash fill? No, no. Custom list is different. You are trying to create a list. This flash fill is to extract the data which is available here. Say, you know, whatever data is there next to this table. So you cannot use this for every time. So you cannot use this. The same thing, see, suppose if I go here and say can to key and say control E, it will not work. Flash will work only when you are adjacent to this table only. Got it? Okay. Right. Any other questions? All right. So thank you so much, people, for uh, today's session. So how was this session? Now you should take one minute and tell me how was today's session. Quickly, I want all of you. Is the values in the list validation case sensitive? No, it is not case sensitive. Uh, let me show you this. Where is that data validation? So it is not case sensitive. See, I have binders. I can use binders. That is not a problem. Ahmed Fauzi, did I answer your question? Good. Whenever someone message that, uh, you know, I learned something new today, I'll feel very happy actually because, uh, you know, very informative because you know what happens when you come for uh, any kind of trainings okay when you actually you know when i'm teaching if someone uh, learns something new i'll be very happy for anyone it shouldn't be like uh, you're coming just for time pass and sitting here and going i know excel whatever topics you are uh, learning some of you might already know this but still there are a lot of things to learn okay so tomorrow session we'll have something called as get data which is very much a new option that is 365 okay can we access the sheet from the website uh, website in the sense uh, ishika i didn't get to what, what actually you are telling access the sheet from website means what data validation so you make data and list life easy yes rakesh you are right ishika can you just uh unmute and you can speak actually you can uh, tell me what actually you are uh, asking i'm not able to understand ishika gupta Irshad Dhuzain, I came to know just yesterday about this session. I'll go through previous videos. Sure, uh, Irshad, please go through the videos. All the videos are available, okay? Along with that, you have the practice files as well.
Now, if you want Excel file, then uh, it is already available. Ishika, it is already available in the um, app. Okay, you can download that or you can also go to this, you know. In this website also, you can uh, get this. It is available. Go to that course. Okay, okay, sure. <clears throat> Someone is raising a hand. If you have any questions, you can uh, unmute and you can ask also. No problem. All right, people. So, thank you so much. So, today's videos I'll be uploading and uh, I will be, you know, uploading this file as well. So, please practice. And soon we'll be starting our uh, Power BI classes as well. So, once this Excel is done, so Power BI is also getting started. So, all of you be prepared. That is very, very uh, interesting and uh, uh, Gopi sorry I was not there uh, this weekend and uh, next weekend also we have uh, some uh, uh, programs of distributing books for uh, the poor kids so this weekend also may not be there but the next weekend for sure there is one topic which you all of you will actually like that is about PL300 and MO200 and people I want all of you to attend this session uh, I think especially Satya. Okay, so I have got uh, some dumps as well, which is exactly like what actually you can uh, use it. Okay, for writing the exams, clear all these exams, people. I'll tell you the importance of uh, the certifications. So next week uh, you will have that uh, complete details about how you can actually clear uh, the Excel certification and PL three hundred certification. It's very interesting topic actually. Okay, so. <laughs> Please do attend. I will announce it either uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. ECBA, what is that? I'm sorry, I'm not aware of it. So please, can you tell me, Ishika, what is that ECBA? Ishika, I want to know what is that ECBA so that uh, I'll check what I actually, you know, I can help you out. Entrance certificate in business mostly used to okay. Let me check. I am actually not aware of this. There are a lot of certifications. Uh, you know, um, entry certificate in business and is mostly used to prove your experience in data analytics. Sure, uh, Ishika, I'm not aware of it. I will check that and I'll get back to you for sure. If that is very useful, then let's have a discussion on that as well within these sessions. Okay, All right, people. Thank you so much for today's session. It was very uh, simple topics, but still very important topics. And I guess, you know, most of them actually message saying that uh, they learned something new today. I'm very happy about it. And tomorrow, please do attend because I'll be teaching you about a very interesting topic, which is very much close to Power BI as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you guys in the next session. Bye-bye. Take care.